you're listening to an exclusive interview on WNS. Okay, folks, joining us on the show this week, it is Martin Casaus, also known as Marty the Moth Martinez from Lucha Underground. Martin, how are you today? I'm doing fantastic, brother. How you doing? Uh, doing great. For all things Marty the Moth Martinez, you can follow him on Twitter at Martin Casaus. You can also f- check him out on Facebook, facebook.com slash Martin Casaus. And you can catch him on Lucha Underground Wednesday nights on the L Ray Network. So make sure you check your local listings for that. We've been following it, loving the show. So we're very happy happy to have you on this week. Great, right, appreciate you having me on, man. Now, you were actually you were introduced into the world, to the wrestling world nationally through WWE's Tough Enough back in 2011 and you actually became one of the favorites to win the whole thing, but unfortunately you had to leave due to injury. Could you take us through the emotions you experienced while you were there on the show, when you were injured, your recovery time and your return to the ring? Oh uh, man, that was a roller coaster. Um so you're going for your dream contract. You're going to be a wrestler to be full time, something everybody loves to do. And uh, I was doing pretty well. Um, it was halfway through the show, um, and honestly, looking at the competition, I knew I was going to be the winner of the show. Um, and uh, some fate have it when my ankle randomly broke. I have no idea how or why. None of the doctors do either. Um, so we went to the hospital. And uh, the cameras had to stop rolling because of the hospital. But, yeah, that was pretty freaking sad for me. I won't lie. That was, I was doing so well. And then it gets pulled out from under me. Um, and that was – that definitely took a hit. And I might have – you know, I'm a man. But <laughs> I might have shed a tear or two in the hospital. <laughs> well, my, sure. It was a dream that was going away. So, um, yeah, that was – it was intense. Um I, what they didn't show is that my ankle broke. Uh, we actually did three more drills, and then uh, before I actually, they made me go away. Um, I did about three more drills on the one leg, and then Bill DeMott sat us all down, yelled at us because it was just a rough day at practice that day. And then they pulled me aside and said, I need you to go to the hospital. I said, I don't want to because I do. If I go to the hospital, you guys aren't going to let me come back if it's mm-hmm. broke. And, uh, the way they convinced me to going was I will only go to the hospital if you is if you let me take this up, no matter what it is, and come back and finish this competition. Absolutely sure. Yeah. They lied. Of course. They lied. <laughs> <laughs> so I went to the hospital, um, had a sad moment, spent overnight, um, just well, I had about five doctors um, for second opinions. Um, just trying to find anyone that will say you, you're good to go for the next five weeks. Um, then I even approached the doctor and said, can you shoot it up with something so I don't fill it for five weeks? And uh, they wouldn't do it. Hmm. I guess that's illegal or something. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, it was rough. Then I, um, actually they took me from the – I think it was actually the, – they took me to a different hotel. They didn't take me back to the house. Um, and the ne- very next time I saw everybody was when I went into a, van, a production van and they said, hey, so you're going to hang up your belt there um, and uh, you're going to give Steve Austin the belt so you can't go anymore. I'm like, um, all right, well, that's a rude way to start the day. Um, <laughs> I'm fine. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> so that's what they did. I went in there and uh, Steve let me hang up my own belt, which is awesome. Um, and then they gave me two uh, screws in my leg or my ankle here. That's going to stay with me forever. So that's my souvenir from WWE <laughs> Tough Enough. Thank you very much, WWE. <laughs> um, and, uh, yeah, so I was supposed to be out for, I think, six months or something like that, six months. I, I came back a couple months early just because I wanted to get back in the ring. When your whole life is you're so close to getting what you want out of life and it pulls out from under you, you hate just to sit there and dwell on it. So uh, that was kind of a long process for me, but it actually made me actually a lot mentally tough than I thought. Definitely. It was good. I think everything happens for a reason, and I end up at Lucha Underground, so I'm all right with it. Absolutely, and we definitely want to talk about your Lucha Underground, but I do have one more uh, WWE-related question. Before you got called into uh, Lucha Underground, were you ever contacted uh, by WWE to, to maybe be given another tryout? Did they contact you any time after that? I, I was, yeah. I was contacted They actually about three years later. Three years, wow. because just because I was still doing stuff, 
um, and going and being an extra on stuff. They actually sent me down to the WWE Performance Center. That place is amazing. Um, and uh, I had a tryout, and they they said when I was down there, the tryouts there are ridiculous, I think. Basically, they try and break you, and they don't do any sort of wrestling. They just make you do a million things so you get tired and so that you quit. Mm-hmm. I don't quit. <laughs> so um, we went there, and the very last day we had a promo, and then they said, all right, we're going to have a couple people doing some matches. And they went by, and they're kind of like, you, I like you, uh, let's do a match with you. Martin, we already know what you can do, so you don't worry about it. And then I'm like, well, if you already know why I'm, what I can do, why the hell am I here then? <laughs> um, so either hire me or don't give me a tryout. So <laughs> it, is, it is what it is. But I did have a tryout there. Um, it, I was, it's a great chance to be at the Performance Center. That place is amazing. If you ever get a chance to go, that place is amazing. Make sure you do. Um, but, yeah, I did get a tryout in 2014, 2015, something like that, in December. And right about that time, Lou Chonagall was knocking on my door. Um, they actually contacted me about a year before the show came out, too. So it was wow. right about that time. That's very cool, you know, to find out that they approached you on that. So whenever they came to you, did they say, hey, we've got this character, we think it'll be great for you? Or did they kind of work with you and, and you kind of came up with some part of parts of the character? Or was was it sort of a 50-50 or was it more of their, hey, we've got this character, we think you'd be great for it? Actually, they didn't even, by the time they approached me, they didn't even have an idea of the show. All they idea they knew or any sort of structure to the show yet. They contacted me about a year before. It was one of the first guys contacted. All they knew was we're bringing a Lucha Libre to America. We'd like you to be on a show. That's pretty much all we know. Are you in? <laughs> I said yes. So, nice. <laughs> and then uh, it was Eric Van Wagen. Um, he worked with me on Tough Enough. And uh, so I just kept getting in contact with him every couple of months. Like, hey, is this thing still happening? He's like, yep, yep, still in the works, still in the works. <laughs> and then we got there. And uh, it was funny because they had no idea what to do with me. Um, they just know. They just said, "Hey, you're. I'm not quite sure what to do with you, but we want you on the show because you're entertaining." <laughs> um, so I actually had my first match as a magician. I was Magnificent Martin on, <laughs> on the second match ever at Lucha Underground that never made it to TV. Nice. So I was wearing a shower curtain. <laughs> but but you got to be a part of history wearing that shower curtain. <laughs> Yeah, straight. Yeah, it was a blast. I was the second match. I was. I wish I was the first, but I was the second. Famous B and uh, somebody else was a, a big B boy. Was the first match, but I was the second match in Newtown Underground history. They had to warm up the crowd for you. That's right. Yeah, you know, kind of, <laughs> kind of warm them up. <laughs> so then you later became what is now known Marty the Moth Martinez, uh, and your character has evolved so much. I saw I saw comments on uh, on you know YouTube videos of saying this is what the the Bray Wyatt character should be like, or you know this is what this particular <laughs> character should be like, and you know you've se- you've seemed to found your niche and you've you've honed your craft. Tell us about Marty the Moth Martinez. Like where did this character come from in your mind? Um, well, they came up to me and they approached me with the character, hey, you're, you're going to be part of this moth tribe, it's going to be one of the seven Aztec tribes. We just want you to be com- comedic relief. Just entertain us, make us laugh. I'm like, all right, and that's pretty much all that they really gave us. And then uh, literally during rehearsals before my first TV match against Prince Puma, I was messing with Melissa, and I don't know if I was whispering sweet nothings in her ear or what I was doing, <laughs> but I was just messing with her, and they're like, Ooh, could you could you do that? Could you actually flap your arms like that, kind of like a moth, and just stand co- even closer to her, make her super uncomfortable? Like, hey, you want me to do that on TV today? I'm like, they're like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, sure. Wait, you will? Yeah, yeah, totally, I will. All right, do it. Let's see what happens. So that's how the whole. It was actually so that whole thing with me and Melissa started out as a joke with me messing with her during rehearsals because I like to goof off. <laughs> um, and then uh, I knew I was good at comic relief. I can I can make people laugh at me. Um, and uh, but I know that usually the comedic relief doesn't get to hold championships. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I went and talked to Vampiro and said, "How can I still be funny and still make this work that 
I can have a title in my future. And uh, he said, well, let's make it darker. And if you're going to talk to, if you're going to try and make anything darker, that pair is the man to go to. Absolutely. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, that's where it evolved. So then I just started um, using some of my acting classes and stuff like that, doing some research on serial killers um, and horror movies, and then just kind of taking that aspect. And that's where you saw that switch from season one where they told me I want to kidnap Sexy Star. And uh, that's where you see this whole darkness coming about from the goofy smiley that you saw in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Childish in the beginning, but then you find out his darker past. Exactly. He's got to have some layers to some characters. And one of the things about, about your career so far in Lucha Underground is you've gotten to have one of those standout matches. You know, there are certain matches in Lucha Underground that people constantly go back and talk about. Like, if you're going to watch Lucha Underground, this is one of the matches. Your match with Killshot, the Weapons of Mass Destruction match, I think is one of those matches. What was your thought before and after that particular match? Um, before, it was funny because... At the very end of season three, they're going to end me and Killshot in a different manner. They're just going to just give us a regular quick match and just move on to something different. But uh, me and Shane, Shane's Killshot, uh, said we really enjoy working with each other. I think we have something here with the dog tags. Give us a chance. Can we, can we blow this off right? And uh, this is one thing I love so much about Lucha Underground is that the list, the the writers and the producers, everyone said, okay, let's give them a chance. Hmm. And so we rocked, we went with it, and uh, it turned out very well. Um, and the funny thing is, before that match, they said, hey, we're giving you the ball today. So we're not saying we're not going to give you the ball ever again, but this is going to be your, your first main event on this show. This is going to be your, you're here, and this match could take you here. So no pressure. <laughs> like, oh, okay, no, thanks. Um, so me and Coach Shot got together, and uh, that match happened. And honestly, that was probably probably the highlight of my career. Is after that match was over, um, just because the crowd was eating up the whole time. But then the pressure was gone once once uh, I was on top of that ladder. Mm. Um, I knew I was going to be okay. I, I was more worried for his safety than mine, breaking his ankles on my chest. Yeah. Um, that last move off the ladder, that was super fun. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but no, I think that was honestly one of the biggest, the most emotional moment for me in my career. Um, because after he got sent away and he had a celebration, we went off air. Um, the fans were cheering me and the writers came out and were clapping for me. And I think that was a big, okay, I did what the writers need. So. Um, I'm very happy with this. And honestly, that match, it was very fun for me. And uh, I love that match. Phil Scott is an amazing guy to rest. Very cool. Do you ever go back and uh, and watch the matches that you compete in? Once they come out, I immediately watch them. <laughs> just because I want to critique myself. Um, I always critique or I always tape my matches every single time I have a match. I critique, so I always want to get better. Especially at Lucha Underground, where with me... I can do all these cool flips. I can do stuff like this. But people care less about that instead of they care when I look at Melissa Santos in a very <laughs> disturbing manner. I think so, she's just playing hard to get. <laughs> I think so, too. She's going to give up one of these days. She, she's going to give up. I'll get her. I'll get her. Don't you worry. I love the, the fact that the, uh, the crowd has... Uh, in a in a weird way, they've accepted you. They're they're chanting "creepy bastard" at you. They're saying "no means no." Uh, you know, they they say in wrestling, as long as you're getting a reaction, you're doing something right. So for you to get that kind of a reaction, it's got to be good. The people at the temple, they're so amazing, man, and the, the they are a character on their own. Um, yeah, the second I go out now, it's "creepy bastard" and uh, "no means no" um, and "kill moth." or something, kill moth or kill the moth, kill the moth. <laughs> that one's newer. It's amazing. Um, and one, one thing that I'm actually quite proud of that the writers talked to me that they're excited about is that most of the bad guys in Lucha Underground still get cheered. Mm -hmm. But nobody cheers the moth. They don't like the moth. <laughs> Legit, they hate the moth. So they, uh, one of the writers said that the uh, Marty the Moth has zero redeeming qualities in him <laughs> whatsoever. So... That therefore the fans will never cheer me, and I'm 100% okay with that. <laughs>
And then you then you throw in your sister Mariposa in there as well, and it's just all kinds of chaos. Oh, there's going to be some fun for this season. You're going to see it. Um, with me and Mariposa, yeah, it's a fun relationship that we're going to explore a little bit in season three here. Um, M- Melissa's an amazing wrestler, so it just, it's great. I have an awesome tag team partner, an awesome sister in, in the show. Um, I'm pretty stoked for everybody to see. Like, I kind of wish it was just like on Netflix or something where you can just throw it all at you at once. Mm-hmm. Um, but at the same time, it definitely built suspense having to wait seven days. And it was one of those things where after the first season, there was such an outcry, such an outpour. We need a season two. And then we were gifted a season two. And not only that, it's like, hey, you got season two. Now you're getting season three and possibly future seasons to come. So, you know, I, I'll happily wait an extra week just so I can uh, check out the next episode. <laughs> and rumors about season four and touring for the rest of the year. So, yeah. Speaking of touring, you guys got to go on the road and uh, y'all were fortunate enough to or we were fortunate enough to have you guys show up at Houston, which is where we got to see you perform against Paul London. So that was a lot. Of, that was a fun match. Oh, my gosh. And he yeah, with him and the rabbit tried that. That's a fun <laughs> thing to play with. So you got his goofiness with the rabbit tribe and my goofiness with the moth. I really hope I get to wrestle him a lot more at Lucha Underground because Paul London is just an amazing man, an amazing wrestler. Inside the the Lucha Underground temple, is there anyone that you would like to face that's on your sort of list of of people you'd like to face that's not a champion at the moment? It's not a champion at the moment. Paul's definitely up there. I'd like to wrestle Son of Havoc. Mm. I have... I, he was on WWE Tough Enough with me. Mm-hmm. Um, he came down to Utah and wrestled for my uh, for a company down here, but I didn't get to wrestle him because I was still out with my ankle. So after all these years, I've yet to wrestle my buddy uh, Matt. So I would love to wrestle Son of Havoc um, and maybe just throw him around by that beard of his. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, who in the wrestling world, past or present, would you like to have a match with? I always say um, what my dream match would be Stone Cold Steve Austin just because of WWE Tough Enough and obviously Steve Austin is Steve Austin. <laughs> um, Shawn Michaels is the man I, that, I, that actually got me, that kind of taught me what wrestling was, like how he, how he went out there and he had so much fun out there. You could tell he was having fun. Um, that is someone that, that would be a dream match for me, Shawn Michaels. Um, but presently, uh, people that are in the ring right now, there's so many people out there that I would like to get my hands on at least twice. I would say the first time is for fun. The second time, you really get to see what you can do. Hmm. So um, I would love to wrestle Matt Cross um, and Shawn Michaels, um, and I'd love another match with Paul London. Try to check out that Rabbit Tribe. Very cool. Um, now, for a lot of wrestlers out there in the world, Wrestling is their life. It is the only thing that they have to to fall on. And one thing that fans might not know about you is that you're not just a wrestler. You're also a stockbroker. How on earth does that happen? (laughs) Yeah, um, I'm a stockbroker. I own two businesses, and I'm an actor as well. So I'm trying to stay busy. Um, That happened because actually when I was... 18, 17, something like that. I was working at a bank just because it was a better job than a restaurant. <laughs> um, I was playing sports back then, and my friend who got a job at the brokerage firm that I work at, I'm not allowed to say the name on it for some reason, um, but the brokerage firm I work at, she actually sat me down and forced me to apply for that position, and uh, it ended up getting me into the brokerage firm. So I have my Series 7 licenses, my Series 63 licenses, uh, a girl that forced me to actually come to the stockbroker job actually didn't pass her test, so she couldn't actually stay at this job, <laughs> this job here. So that was kind of fun. But um, I'm literally actually at the office right now at the brokerage firm um, trying to help people retire. That's amazing. Like what, When you first told your coworkers, hey, I have to go wrestle, what was their reactions? <laughs> you have to go do what? Yeah. <laughs> like... <laughs> Like high school wrestling? I'm like, no, no, no. I like high school wrestling. I wear a lot less spandex in this wrestling than I do. Do they ever come out to, um, to some of your matches and, uh, and show their support? Um, some have. Um, some loved it. Some were like, oh, that's too violent for my kids. I'm in Utah, so it is what it is. <laughs> 
Um, but one thing that has been a constant is uh, a lot of people that work here, this is all they have. They have their job, and they go mm-hmm. home to their families. So I asked them about their weekends. I said they hang out with their kids and mm-hmm. have picnics. And then they asked me about my weekends. They always ask me how my weekends went <laughs> because it's usually a lot more eventful <laughs> than working a nine-to-five job and taking care of family. So how was your weekend? Well, I watched some football. How about you? Oh, I got thrown off of a ladder through a table, you know, uh, just casual. Exactly. <laughs> I had 20,000 people in Mexico, you know, throwing beer at me, <laughs> flipping me off. And it was a blast. It was great. So, you yeah, know, it's, it's definitely um, some fun stories. And everyone here has been pretty awesome about it. Um, but it definitely, and it, I even told so close to you, Austin, and he says, what the hell are you doing wrestling? <laughs> <laughs> You're a stockbroker. You're smarter than that. Like, well, I don't want to be a stockbroker my whole life. So that's why I'm kicking ass all over the country. I can just imagine someone walking into your business for the first time, sitting down at, across the desk from you, noticing all the bruises on your face and going, I don't know if I should go to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you should have seen the other guy. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's been fun. Um, and uh, it's actually, it's brought a lot of opportunities because then I, I can do stuff. I'm not just a full-time wrestler, which I don't know if I would love just to be a full-time wrestler because I don't think it pays as much as uh, I'd like to make. I have big plans for my future, so millionaire by 40. There you go. So, hypothetical question. Um, if the WWE were to come calling and they offered you the uh, the full-time gig there, would you still do your stockbroking? Can you do your stockbroking job on the side? Or would you, I mean, because I know the WWE is a demanding uh, schedule, being on the road about 300 days a year. Would you be able to still do that? If I ever went to WWE, nope, you are a WWE superstar. That is all you do. Uh, you're pretty much not allowed to do pretty much anything else. Um, and you don't even have time to do anything else. Um, but if the WWE were to come to me right now and say we have this uh, uh, full-time gig for you, I would just let them know. Um, I appreciate that. It's about time. And uh, just like you guys told me, we're going to wait for a future time. Mm. I'm here at Lucha Underground, and I love it. As long as Lucha Underground has their doors open, I'm going to wave that flag like, I've never waved a flag before. So, as long as Lucha's around, I'm going to be there, even if WWE didn't offer me anything. Very cool. And then, speaking of Lucha Underground, you can catch it Wednesdays on the El Rey Network. Make sure to check your local listings. At least put it on your DVR or download the seasons on iTunes now that it's available on there. For everything Martin Casals, follow him on Twitter at Martin Casals or Facebook.com slash Martin Casals. Marty the Moth Martinez, it has certainly been a, uh, a pleasure. We appreciate you coming on the show. Hey, man, I appreciate you having me on. It's been a blast. I appreciate the plugs. Um, and, again, just for my fans, follow me. Um, follow this podcast. Uh, follow me. Write me messages. With, but long, main story short, long story short, sorry I'm sick, so I have my voice right now. <laughs> but thank you, everybody who are watching the show and who support without wrestling fans. We're just two dudes rolling around in spandex. So thank you very much, wrestling fans. Keep being vocal. Let's keep Lucha going for a very long time and keep supporting indie wrestling. Awesome. All right, man. Well, we appreciate it. (laughs) No problem. Thank you much for having me on, Daniel.